There we go. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to Elevate, the new webinar series for creative entrepreneurs. Each week on Elevate, we'll be featuring a special guest from a creative industry, and we'll be discussing a topic related to your business. This episode of Elevate is sponsored by CloudSpot. If you're a photographer, you should love the way you send images to clients. CloudSpot features stunning online galleries and emails branded to your company, all with just a few easy clicks. Make clients happier and earn more money. Go to cloudspot.io to try it for free and use code word Natalie for an additional 15% off any package. So really cool. We can see that there's a lot of people here in chat. Hello, everybody. We've got people from all over the world. I can see from Spain, Chicago, South America. Awesome. We have a bunch of Rising Tartars as well. Welcome, everybody. It's so cool to have everybody here on the first episode. This is really, really fun for me. And the most fun part about episode one here is the fact that we're kicking things off big. In fact, our special guest today is someone who is really well known within the community. She's a social media genius and guru, and her name is Natalie Frank. Natalie, are you there? Yes. Hi, guys. Can there you guys hear me? There she is. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm doing great. It, we, I'm like getting kind of up and going on this Monday morning and a ton of stuff uh, on the horizon for us, which is really exciting, but I can't wait to like do this. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Honored to be the first guest. That's crazy. Absolutely. You know, it's so cool because I had like the choice of like getting anybody who I wanted really for this first episode. And I was like, you know what? Like I so love Natalie. Everybody, and nobody doesn't love you, right? Everybody just loves Natalie and what you're doing and the message and everything. So Thank it's you. so great to have you on. And, and you know, I love always talking to you. So, really so with this, Elevate is of course a conversational series, right? So there's no slides at all. We're just going to be talking back and forth about right. topics that are related to all these people that are watching us right now. Um, today, we're going to be talking about social media and branding and going through your top tips that you have, everybody, as far as all that stuff goes. But with this being Elevate, I do want to start things off a little bit differently. And I'm going to start off with kind of a fun question, okay? I'm not going right. to hold you to it, but let's see what your answer is here. We're going to play Would You Rather, okay? Play oh, no. My kids all, yeah, I know. Don't worry. It won't be too bad. I promise. I promise. Okay. So would you rather have to read the iTunes terms and conditions once per hour, every hour for the rest of your life. And when you read it, you have to stand up and read it out loud. Okay. That's pretty bad. Or would you rather everywhere that you go on foot, you have to do an all out sprint? Now, before you answer, like imagine that for a second, because you're in Costco, you're like Lunchables, watermelon, quinoa, whatever it is, right? You're going into a honey book meeting, you're like sprinting everywhere. What do you pick? Oh, I'd rather sprint because I really think that it kind of mirrors the pace of my life already. So there really wouldn't be too much of a change. Um, and also, I think that I'm a big believer in and I, anyone who's a creative. If you guys are watching this, you're probably the same way. It's like I can't sit still for too long. I have to be constantly moving. Um, I actually have ADD like a, I really do. And so sure. for me, even it's like I can't imagine just doing the same thing over and over. My life has to be a I'd rather be sprinting and just look in a hot mess. 24 hours sense. a day. It would look ridiculous, but hey, yeah. it makes sense. But I'd and probably like get really fit too, wouldn't I? I like this actually. This might not be such a bad idea. So that's my my rather. I would rather. Sprint. We're changing yeah. lives one person by one. Yeah, this the is most great. valuable information you guys will get out of the entire webinar today. Is that <laughs> absolutely? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> So, you know, and that was actually the perfect segue because you're talking about how busy you are and everything. And I was thinking about it this morning going, okay, so Natalie Frank, for those of you who don't know, is the founder of the Rising Tide Society. She's the head of community for HoneyBook. She's a professional photographer and she just recently rebranded nataliefrank.com, which provides awesome resources for photographers and creatives as well. How the heck do you have time to do all of this? Oh man. Well, I mean, okay, so the truth is I have an amazing team. That is like, that is the truth. I think, um, you know, there's this myth that you have to do everything and do everything very well. And uh, the reality is that I focus on the things that I cannot and should not outsource, outsource to anybody else. So um, I even have like a virtual assistant who manages my schedule, um, who even like helps me with uh, emails, like actually like, you know, formatting and categorizing the ones I need to hit first. Um, which, which ones I need to kind of sit down and, and be more um, thoughtful and intentional about responding to. So she's been sure. amazing. Um, a team, like that's the truth. The truth is having a great team. And then I think prioritization. So I've been able to sit down and start to prioritize um, what aspects of uh, my day-to-day -day 
like I said, like need to be from me. Uh, and I believe social media is actually one of those things that requires my focus. Um, and what else can, can someone else do? Or what can I automate? What can I streamline, you know, with software like HoneyBook, like CloudSpot, but like so many others sure. that gives me more time. So that's kind of, yeah, my overall view of, of how to get it all done. Absolutely. And it's interesting that you bring up priorities because I mean, yes. as business owners, you know, we don't have enough time in a day, right? And I'm thinking back to myself, I've got kids, I've got a business, I work for CloudSpot, all kinds of stuff. So let's talk about and, and try to incorporate our topic today of being of social media. Yep. What do you prioritize when it comes to social media on a daily basis? Yes. So, you know, let's get, we'll even take like a step back. I think when we talk about social media, um, I almost want to say is, you know, prioritization starts before you even choose the platforms that you are going to engage with. So we like to think about, you know, prioritization on social and most people would expect a statement like, oh, commenting or liking other people's posts or creating great content. But in reality, the prioritization process, it starts when I sit down uh, to analyze which platforms are the best fit for which segment of my life and business. So the platforms that we use specifically for the Rising Tide Society, let's say, might be different from the platforms we're using for HoneyBook, which are right. also different from the platforms I'm using on a personal uh, brand note. Why? Sure. Because I think that the key here is we have to remember who we're targeting. We don't want to just reach everybody. I don't care at the end of the day if you have 100 followers or 1,000 or 10,000. If you're not targeting the right people, actually trying to attract the right audience, it's futile, right? Like it really, really will not yield revenue at the end of the day. And if you're trying to do this as a business, that is the goal. So I think that um, you know prioritization starts by selecting platforms. So for instance, you know, if you are a solopreneur in the creative space, um, you know, you might notice that platforms that are highly visual, so something like Instagram, even something like Facebook, which although a lot of us have been frustrated with the platform, it still lends itself to being one of the most um, sort of tele, like it allows you to teleport is what I like to say. Like Facebook allows teleportation. What that really means is it allows you to go from the content that you're reading quickly to someone's website, um, quickly back, quickly deeper into the platform. Whereas Instagram, even now with some of the hacks that we've uh, discovered and been using on the rising tide and personal brand side, um, still is, is more difficult for you to get someone to teleport out of the platform. They work really hard to keep you on Instagram if you're using Instagram. Right. So, um, kind of prioritizing in that sense has been been really helpful and i um, happy to answer any questions that you guys have about that or like which ones I'm using or, um, yeah, I mean, but that's sort of where priorities start is which Oh, I've got questions for you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, cool. So let's talk about then uh, from the beginning. So somebody starts their business and yep. they do social media, they don't know what they're doing. Where do they start? I mean, do they really like go after all the platforms together or they just focus on one or two? Yeah, so you focus on the one or two or three, depending on the bandwidth that you have, that your ideal clients, your ideal customers are engaging with and spending their time on. Um, and if you're not sure which platforms there are, those are, you can do very simple things. You can survey, right? So you can actually find people that are in that, that target demographic and just ask them very simple questions. Um, how are they spending their time? Where do they read their news? What do they do when they've got an hour to, to kill, right? Are they right. watching Netflix? Are they on? And these, all of these things are important. We like to think that it's fluffy and easy, but no, like this is, this is real, um, you know, customer data that you're trying to gather and, and understand. So target the, the platforms that your ideal customers are using. So as a wedding photographer on, on that side, uh, when I was exclusively trying to attract brides and grooms, you know, Pinterest is a place where they plan their weddings. A lot of wedding photographers aren't spending time making sure their blog posts are optimized to be seen and shared on Pinterest, but I was. Um, and, and also, you know, Instagram obviously is a huge tool, not only just for people that want to spend time to see what their friends are doing and to share visual content, but, you know, it also allows you to connect with and build relationships with other people in the wedding industry for me in that, in that season. Um, you know, I, we can use like the HoneyBook side, the Rising Tide side, even Twitter's been a great tool. Um, there are a lot of people that have strayed from, from Twitter. I, in my personal right. brand as a wedding photographer, have strayed from Twitter. But in terms of employer branding, like it, every platform has, has its, its strength. So I would say pick the one or two where your ideal customers or ideal clients are spending their time. Um, be really cutthroat with where you're investing your energy. I think that, you know, one of the issues we see is we'll look to educators that say, oh, try everything and go everywhere. And that's great. But like, I would ask them, like, do they have a creative team? 
do they have a social media manager or team? Because if that's so, that's very different. Um, if sure. you're just one person, I'd, I'd much prefer that you are um, doing a very good job where you can and, and really showing up on the platforms that you are allocating as your key um, points of contact with your audience than just spreading yourself too thin and feeling constantly burnt out and constantly like you're not enough, not performing. Um, it's just, it's easy to burn out that way. So I just want to caution people against, against doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and going along with that, you know, topic of burnout, there's also another thing that I want to discuss, which is there's just a lot of people out there who are really shy, right? Yes. So, and, and I think, you know, I even think about it and, you know, sometimes it's really hard just to post an Instagram stories yes. or, you know, when you're talking to the camera oh. and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people out there who are a lot more shy than me or you are. So what do we tell them and how do, do they overcome it or do they just change the way that they're posting in general? So this is such a good question. And I feel like um, I, I almost want to come at it from two perspectives. So the first perspective is, um, you know, I think there's there's shyness. Right. And I think there's also though fear. And so what I would do is first identify, is it truly that uh, being on Instagram stories is not the best fit for your personality? Like, are you someone that, let's say, is more of the, the quiet type? Um, you approach things in a different manner. Um, you know, you aren't super like face heavy on how you communicate, meaning like for me, it's really simple. I get on Instagram stories and I talk right to my audience. But for some people, that's not the medium for them. That's not the strength, sure. right? In that case, still use Instagram stories, just change the way you're doing it. Show, document what you're doing, not yourself explaining it, which is actually a good tip for everyone anyway. You know, basically show, don't tell. Like show them what you're doing, show them what you're creating, show them the client experience. Don't talk to them about it. Like they want to experience it as if they are you, right? It's as if they are behind the scenes, seeing it through your eyes, not just hearing a um, snippet about what's it about, what it, what it is about, I'm sorry. So yes, that would be the first thing. If it's not your strength, um, try to utilize the platform differently, or if it really just the thought of even speaking and recording is too much, totally fine. Just invest that time in a different platform that doesn't require video, right? Although I will say like, I think, and this is where I'm getting to the fierce, the second side, the fear side. Mm -hmm. I think that video is the future of social. I think, you know, a lot of people are saying that, but I'm even kind of in the realm of, um, when we were interviewing for social media manager candidates, um, you know, that was a big thing I wanted to kind of understand is like, do they also feel like video is the future and VR and the ability to do 3D immersion? Like, I literally think that is the future like of, of social. Um, and for that reason, if fear is the thing holding you back, like if you're shy, but it's really because you're afraid, um, you're afraid of what people will think of you, you're afraid of sounding silly, you're afraid of seeming X, Y, Z, like insert your insecurity here, then my honest like response to you is you have to overcome that. Like you have to overcome that because there will always be someone that will judge you. There will always be someone that doesn't like the way your hair looks or the way you talk or your accent or like whatever it is, but you're not doing this for them, right? Like right. you're not building a platform for the haters. Like you're not, you're building a platform so that you can build a business that, you know, that is, is what you have to remember. And you can't make the kind of impact that you want to make in this modern world if you don't have um, social media platforms to share things on. I mean, just the truth. Um, so that would be my advice is if it's truly because it's not the right fit for your personality, don't be disingenuous and try to um, be someone that you're not. That's definitely don't do that. However, if you're holding back because you're afraid, um, I'll be really honest. Like I, I'm always insecure when I'm on video. Um, Ryan saw me when we got on here and I'm literally like, Oh, my hair. And I, I feel like, you know, I, I had a lot of really sweet desserts over the weekend. I'm bloated. I just, oh my feel, gosh. but but see, this is my point. Like sure. this, I'm a human. Like, I feel these insecurities as well, but I remember why I'm doing this. And it's not about me in the first place. And I think as long as I, I keep that focus, as long as you keep that focus, not on how your insecurities are being portrayed, right? Like how, how you're afraid of maybe what people are thinking, but instead focusing on what your actions are doing for your customers, what your actions are doing for your community um, and look outward rather than inward, it changes the game entirely. So even something like an Instagram story I posted uh, before we hopped on here, I absolutely had those fears and I was nervous about it, but I was like, no, this is going to be such a fun webinar. This is a great opportunity for people to feel like they can ask questions um, just to be able to dive into some of the things all of us are dealing with. And so the value um, and the focus on providing that value was not for my own gain, but for the gain of the community and the gain of my audience. And so that changes, I think, a lot of those fears right off the bat, remembering why you're doing this, the real purpose behind it.
Absolutely. Got to change that perspective for sure. And with you talking about just kind of getting out there and doing it, it kind of reminded me of something. You know, last night I was watching Shark Tank. Random, I know. I love uh, Shark but, Tank. Yeah, isn't it the best? But um, Robert Herjavec actually said something that was really interesting, and I had to write it down so we can talk about it today. And he said, a goal without a timeline is simply a dream. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to really say that again because yeah. um, I don't want this to just kind of go in one way and go out the other with everybody. But he said, a goal without a timeline is simply a dream. And how often is it that all of us, we're all guilty of it, I'm guilty of it. We have like all this great information that comes from, you know, Natalie or comes from somebody else who's just like an incredible person in the industry. And we go, yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. I've done some of those things or like, yeah, okay, great. You know, I'll get around to it. Yeah. Guys, if you don't actually put things, these things into action, what good is it, right? It's just gonna remain a dream. So, you know, if you guys right now are having some kind of fear or you're just worried about the way you look or whatever it is, yes. and you don't wanna actually get out in front of people, I'm telling you, just try and get over that, push through it. And, you know, just like anything else with, with life, you will get through it and it will get better. Right, Nat? Absolutely. I think, you know, one thing to add to that too. So there's like a couple parts of that that are so important, especially when it, when it comes to social. Um, the first is like having, so basically a goal without a timeline. So timeline means it's, it's basically, uh, basically set, documented and measurable in some way. Um, and I would say measurable even in terms of like, what is success? So if you mm -hmm. were saying, I want to build a social media platform, I want to grow my following, I would ask you by how much? Um, because unless you have a number, you'll never know if you've been successful. Like this is so important because we'll say, oh, I want to, you know, I want to grow my business this year. Great. By how much? How much revenue did you make last year? What percentage do you want to increase it by this year? Um, in terms of social media following, like how, what's your engagement now? What's your engagement percentage for comments? Like what's, what's your clout score? And how do you want to raise that? Um, that is so key. And if you don't know those numbers, there are really simple ways to get access. There's so many free tools um, and also great paid tools if you're really invested and really want to kind of dive into the analytics and metrics of social. Um, but I would say, you know, Start by just understanding what it is that you want to accomplish by a number. Um, the other thing you touched on is this idea of like, if fear is holding you back, here's the thing. Um, you know, I really, really, really always like to think about the future. And I don't just mean like five years, 10 years. You, if anyone who's heard me speak knows that when I, when I think about my actions today, I like to question and think, okay, great. How is this going to impact me when I'm 80 years old? Is this driving me to the place I want to be? My ideal retirement life, like where I see my husband and I, is this mm -hmm. choice going to help me get there? So that could be like putting time in my business or choosing not to, choosing to take right. Sunday completely off and go to Big Sur like I did yesterday. Um, or is this something where, you know, basically a hundred years from now, it will make an impact um, on someone down the line. And that's where I think, um, for me personally, a lot of my decisions are driven. And so again, it's like this idea of, of thinking futuristically, thinking long-term, playing the long-term game, understanding that um, you might not have every short-term win right now, but that's okay. Not to allow that to stifle you, I think is so important. Absolutely. And one thing that you had mentioned in there, you started talking about numbers and actually yes. having a goal that you need to set for yourself. And to, to go along with that, you have built this incredible platform, uh, not only through your own personal accounts, but also through Rise and Tide Society. How many followers have you guys built up so far? Oh my gosh. Okay, so on the Rising Tide side of things, um, you know, we are over 115,000 at this point. Oh my gosh, that's, um, that's incredible. It is, it's a, it's a cool benchmark. I mean, I definitely think we didn't ever foresee that happening. So it's been right. really rewarding. Um, and on the personal side, um, I think I'm nearing 50K. I'm not near, like not there yet, but I'm nearing it. And uh, the cool part about it is that yes, those numbers are good in terms of tracking success, but they also mean little to nothing to me. Um, and this is why I'll sure. explain, I'll mm -hmm. explain. Um, people like to focus on followers. Every course that I see is around followers and that's awesome. Like, that's great, I get it. I know why it's um, enticing to someone. I know why it increases the number of people that will purchase your course. I get it, um, I'm a marketer. However, when I look to analyze the health of someone's social platforms, I'm actually looking at engagement instead of necessarily sure. just growth. And so what I really hone in on is great. You have 116,000 followers. How many of them are actually engaging with content? And then there are different levels of engagement, right? So there's like, for example, a like is sort of passive. I like a ton of things. I don't even remember. A comment shows a little bit more commitment. A comment actually shows that someone took the time to write something out um, to express how they're feeling about the particular piece of content that you're sharing. 
So that's wonderful. And then clicks through to a website show an even further commitment level, um, acquiring their email address, them actually subscribing to your newsletter. That shows an even deeper level of commitment. So when I look to um, judge the health of a platform, I always ask people, great, you grew your follower number, but what are you doing after you get that follower? Are you nurturing them? Are you getting them off the platform and onto your owned properties, meaning your email list, right? Um, you know, so that you can nurture them and lead them through the curve of commitment. So where they convert to being a customer and, or if they've already converted, where you can actually lead them to becoming a brand ambassador, which is sort of that, that post customer stage of business. And so we like to just very surface level, think about our social platforms as solopreneurs, because, Hey, we only have so many hours in the day. Why should we be stressing about whether we're nurturing someone right through, through this funnel? But the reality is you should spend just as much time engaging as you do trying to grow, if not more time engaging uh, your audience and your community. And it's something that we overlook all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think one thing that people struggle with, you know, let's just say that they've got that funnel, right? And they've yes. built up the engagement, they've built up the follower base. How then do they convert these people who are on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter into actual clients? Yes. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, you know, specifically when we're talking to when I or when I talk to the photographer community, um, it's a little bit different than if I were to talk to just a maker, right, or someone that is doing a a low barrier product sale, meaning like the cost is lower. So like if you're doing, mm -hmm. for example, paintings that are ten thousand dollars or offering a wedding that is ten thousand dollars, it's very different than if you're offering uh, an iPhone case for fifteen dollars, um, because it essentially you know requires a different level of commitment, trust, affinity in a brand uh, to make a certain purchasing decision. Just look at buying a car versus, versus right the iPhone case. Very different uh, consumer processes in order to get to customer. So. Um, you know, what I would say first and foremost is you start by analyzing what you're communicating, how often and whether or not that's building trust. So a lot of the clients that I would book from platforms like Instagram, it wouldn't be a book booking that would happen overnight. So someone that would hire me to shoot their wedding and would say, oh, I found you on Instagram. My follow up question was always, oh, great. When? Because what I often okay. found is that they would follow me on Instagram and then actually be an engaged member of my audience for days, weeks, months, years before even converting to customer. Meaning I started following you when my friend Ken got engaged. And then when I got engaged, I knew I needed you to be my wedding photographer. The right. key there is that it took months of actually investing in the platform and building a following, having consistent messaging, showing my imagery, um, basically mm -hmm. creating a mini portfolio before someone actually got to a point where they were ready to um, invest. And I think sometimes we're looking for the short-term win so much so that when we don't see it immediately, we discount the process entirely. Um, sure. You know, when I think that, especially in terms of how to get someone from that initial follow through uh, the point at which they become a customer, there are months of great Instagram posts and content, um, Facebook uh, links that go to blog posts that show, you know, basically my most recent work, uh, telling the story of my couple, going on Instagram stories on a regular basis to take people behind the scenes again, to show them what life is like so they can start to relate to me on a deeper level. They're not going to relate to the fact that I am a photographer, perhaps, unless they are also a photographer, but I'm not trying to, you know, especially when, when you are, um, this is a big mistake and I get this, I should side note, I, um, whenever I do my email list, I, one of the questions I have in my first initial sequence with people is, um, what are you struggling with most? Send me an email and I'll actually, I keep track. So I actually have data mm -hmm. on what people are struggling with most. Number one thing that I get from photographers specifically is the question of, I'm using all of the Instagram strategies. I see people like you and insert 10 other photographer educators using, um, on Instagram, but I'm only attracting other photographers. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Here's what's so important. Um, do not look at me and copy the hashtags I'm using. I'm not targeting clients anymore. I'm targeting other photographers because right. I'm an educator. So do not do that and expect it to yield revenue, right? Like this is a huge eye opener for so many people. Um, what I really want to encourage you to do is go back to thinking about that ideal customer. So in terms of that nurturing, it's going to look a lot like communicating the client experience behind the scenes, showing happy couples, showing your, or, or you know, happy newborns if you're doing portraits, happy, whatever it is, you, you kind of get the gist where I'm going with this. Show your process, right. um, display the creative process. It, basically show someone what makes you different. Show your differentiating factors. They're not gonna relate to you again as being the photographer or being the creative, but they might relate to you specifically um, about the fact that you love your rescue dog 
I love my rescue dog and the number of customers and clients that I have because of that, it's, it's insane. People really feel like they can trust someone that shares something like that in common. Um, share, you know, what you are doing on the weekends. How are you spending your time? What Netflix show are you watching? Why does that matter? Because most people are binging on something on television. So if you're communicating what you, you know, really resonates with you, especially if you think um, from a professional standpoint, it would resonate also with your audience, share, uh, build those bridges of connection in order to bring someone from brand awareness through converting to customer. Yeah, what you said I think is so, so important. And I really wanna make sure that that didn't just go past everybody right now. Um, I was about to ask you, you know, as um, somebody who's new to social media, yeah. you know, how do they build an identity for themselves? And so many times, you know, people are going out there and they'll see that photographer or that, you know, that florist, that baker, that event and coordinator yep. who has the big following and they go, okay, I wanna be that person. So let me just copy everything that they're doing. I'm yep. gonna do, you know, get the flat lays just like them. I'm gonna do my photos just like <sighs> them, whatever it is, right? Yes. And in yeah. that process, they kind of lose who they are and they try to become this other person and just, just doesn't work, right? Because it's right. not them. Absolutely. So I think it's so important that people need to understand that you need to stick to yourself and build a brand around who it is that you are. And just like Natalie said, um, just be posting stuff that's all about you. Without so, a doubt. I think yeah. I think the key here is like, you know, especially when it comes to the personality marketing side of things, which is kind of what we're touching on right now. Um, you know, it, it is so important that when someone engages with your content, your voice, right, your tone, and I mean like brand voice, brand tone, um, that if you are the face of that company, that brand, that it also mirrors the experience they're going to have in real life when they work sure. with you. The worst thing that could possibly happen is in trying to emulate someone else, you do lose sight of who you are and what makes you unique and what makes you really attractive to that ideal customer, that ideal client, um, such that maybe you're actually, you start to attract the wrong customer or wrong client. I see this all the time. You know, I don't understand why I'm getting these types of clients. Like I, I really want this type of client. And then you, you got to look back and say, okay, but what are you marketing? What are you sharing? And that's where those things really, really are important. I think that, you know, it is, it's being you, it's being authentic to that brand voice and tone, which for the most part is your also voice, your tone, right? If you are your, the face of your business. Um, and just finding ways to be authentic about it and to share it and not to play the game of comparison, not to lose yourself in, uh, you know, spending more time worrying about the competitor next door, instead of worrying about how to serve the customer well, this is a big thing I see as well, um, or allowing your comparison of yourself against a competitor to actually diminish uh, your feelings of worth and your, your feelings of accomplishment. This is another big thing that we come across a lot. So it's just, there's so many facets to it, but it does kind of come back to um, remembering who you're trying to serve, focusing on doing that well, um, one time we were at a Tuesdays together. It was one of the first Tuesdays togethers ever, like ever. Um, and it's actually, we're coming up on two years of Rising Tide Society. That's it. People oh think it's gosh. been around forever. I'm like, no, to your birthday uh, in a incredible. little bit. Yeah. It's crazy. And one of the first Tuesdays together, uh, Jess McSweeney, Poppy and Scooter, mm. said something along the lines of, she's a good friend. Um, she was like, do what you love, create good work and serve people well. And the rest takes care of itself. And I think you know, I would add one thing, which is like, and share it well on social, like share the great work you're creating and how and why you serve people well, why you care about the customers that um, you are trying to bring in to your business. Um, and, and that way it amplifies. And that way you can take one effort of uh, basically taking, let's, I'll use weddings because that was what I specialized in, mm -hmm. but you can take this across any, uh, think of it as like a deliverable. So like, what are you delivering? Is it a newborn session? Is it a wedding cake? Is it a, right? Whatever the deliverable is for me, it's a wedding. And you have to think, okay, great. I'm going to do a phenomenal job for this customer. I'm going to take care of them better than anyone else. I'm going to offer them world-class level support. And that's how I ran my business. Um, and now I ask myself, great, how am I going to make sure that I take this effort and I amplify it? I can't do a thousand of this, right? This one wedding per year, but I can take right. one wedding and I can share um, the planning process on social. I can take someone behind the scenes of the actual event itself, show the day unfolding, show how I'm taking care of them behind the scenes. Maybe even in moments they don't realize like, hey guys, so I just wanna show you guys what's happening right now. This is like what something I would do like, okay, so there's a thunderstorm coming in over the coast, which means we have about 
30 minutes and we're not going to get sunset portraits tonight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go talk to the coordinator. We're going to pull the couple out real quick. We're going to capture some epic shots with these big clouds in the background. But just remember, um, have, you know, XYZ apps on your phone, have dark skies, so you know, when the storm is coming and be safe. You know, don't go out on a pier with an umbrella, like silly things, but like <laughs> sharing how I'm looking out for the well-being and care of, of somebody right. on the wedding day in real time. Then you can even take that Insta story, download it and post it. Um, to your Facebook page, right? Like there are ways to take the work you're already doing and amplify it across social channels um, and even maybe create an email newsletter list that shares um, a congratulations each week for that most recent customer or it gives a shout out to a brand ambassador who's sharing mm -hmm. your product or um, your service on social. Or, you know, if you're dancing like Charo in the HoneyBook offices, you know, you can post that all over social, right? Oh my gosh. Sorry, if you guys missed there. that. Good. Miss I don't know if it's Good. permanently, if anywhere, but no. as soon as I get that video, it will be, I promise you. Oh my gosh. The craziness and the things that happen in real life, like uh, share it uh, and amplify it is the right. message and the goal. And I think so often we're doing the work, but we're not also thinking about sharing it. Actually, that's like one of the biggest mistakes is we're doing a great job behind the scenes, but nobody knows and no one can see it. And I think it's a missed opportunity. So thinking about how we're showcasing, how we're amplifying and how we're doing it in an authentic and intentional way. Um, it is, it's strategic, but it's also very beneficial to attracting more of the right types of couples and explaining why you're worth it, right? Like we live in a saturated um, environment for creatives across the board now. We're coming into this amazing new economy. I'm like very passionate about this concept of the creative economy and why it's different from the freelance economy, why it's literally in and of itself a very unique skilled labor force um, that's emerging as small business owners. And yet it's also becoming more saturated. So. Again, rather than focusing on the competitors and the cutthroat methods of trying to beat somebody out, like focus on you, your business, your customer, how you're serving them well, and what makes you different. What is your niche? Who are you attracting? Not about the competitor, about you and your customer. And um, you do that, and you do that well across social channels, and you're you're in really uh, in a really good place. Yeah. That's right. I love it. And you had mentioned Rising Tide Society in there, and I did want to touch on them really quick because, yeah. guys, if you're not a part of Rising Tide Society yet and you are a creative or you own your own business or just anything in that realm, um, please note that Rising Tide Society is what Natalie has done, rather, is build up a community to where uh, creatives can actually come together and support each other. Uh, they actually meet once a month all across yeah. the globe on what's something, what's something called uh, Tuesdays Together. It's their special meeting that they have. Uh, the website also has loads of resources that you can download, and there's different topics every single month that they go over. It's really cool, and it's all free. So if you guys want to, you should really sign up for Rising Tide Society. You just go to risingtidesociety.com, and you can do everything there. And Natalie, we are going to start wrapping things up because we're getting close oh. to the end. I know that there's um, a lot of you had to go over to YouTube because I think there was some kind of an issue. But if you guys do want to hop back over to the actual Webinar Jam uh, tab for a second here, we're actually going to put up uh, a special deal. Natalie is actually offering something to you guys. She's got um, some actual Instagram stories templates that you can download for free through her website. Thank you, Natalie. That is totally awesome. Thank and you. please do check out her website as well, nataliefrank.com. Um, she has some really, really amazing resources for creatives. And Natalie, as we wrap things up, I do have just a few more questions for you. Perfect. A big thing here is Instagram is constantly changing, right? Yes. I mean, they, they have, we don't even know what it is that they're changing because they don't tell us. So how do we keep up with that? And what are, what should we do right now in the beginning of May, if you're listening to this uh, in the future, um, to actually get yourself in front of an audience? Yes, absolutely. So a couple things um, right off the bat. A lot of you guys are aware of this. Maybe some of you guys aren't. Um, but Instagram is really trying to go back to its roots a little bit. They want people to be using the platform as it was intended, meaning not super curated, not super overly business um, designed, especially if you're not listed as a business account, right? Like they obviously have merged with Facebook. Um, it's one company now. And so ultimately, um, they really, really care that things aren't overly automated, meaning um, they actually took down a website called Instagress a couple of weeks right. back, which was one of the largest Instagram robot platforms um, that existed. And they took it down, which is really interesting because a lot mm -hmm. of people saw a 10 to 15% drop um, in engagement. Like this is, I'm literally using stats that we've seen here. Sure. Not because the people were using the Instagram robots, but because so many other people were using the Instagram robots, targeting specific hashtags like Rising Tide Society, targeting hashtags like Community Over Competition, that when those bots came down, 
um, there was so much decreased uh, robot traffic coming across a lot of these channels. So for those of you that were using hashtags well and strategically, you probably saw a decrease um, in engagement. Look. That's incredible. Like, it is, it's nuts. And I've literally talked to multiple educators this week trying to nail down an exact number, but it's all across the board. So what's really interesting is that you cannot control that. You can't, you, we can't control what Instagram is going to do tomorrow. But what we can do is ultimately we can continue to do the things that work well, such as sharing content that our audience wants to see at optimum times when our audience is ready for it. One thing that did change that I've noticed and I've start, you'll see me, I've started to do this as well. It used to be that because the feeds were chronological, you wanted to post um, you know, at the exact right moment so that your audience would see it. Now, what I'm noticing is if I post slightly before what used to be my exact right moment, it actually uh, will perform slightly better. So I'm posting a little bit earlier in the morning, later at night, um, or slightly earlier than my later hour, right, at night. Um, because what I'm noticing is the algorithm is no longer chronological or sorting by chronology. So mm -hmm. it's not like in 45 minutes, people won't see your content. The content actually lives longer on people's feeds. So post slightly less frequently. This is like literally what I'm doing. Post slightly, post slightly less frequently, <laughs> sure. tongue twister there. Um, and also be really in tuned to how you're reacting to the engagement on your post. Meaning if someone comments, comment, reply back on your post. Um, why? Because Instagram is seeing that conversations are happening on a piece of content, just like Facebook. It's going to deem it um, content that is being talked about, content that is social. Um, and, and basically, it will start to continue to populate. So you'll see something you share today still be getting comments tomorrow, 24 hours later, which never was the case um, right. in, in you know previous formats of the algorithm. So that's like one tip to take with you. But again, guys, like do not overstress about the algorithm. Do not overstress about shadow banning. Um, there are really, really simple things that you can find, resources you can find, reputable ones. Please, please, please find <laughs> reputable sources. Don't just like read something some guru said. Um, you know, we've even like, we're emailing Instagram today even about something in particular we want to understand better. Like there are real people at the company and sometimes they will answer your questions. So um, also don't hesitate to reach out. Like you can actually email them. There, there are ways to do it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That's all great advice. And so guys, just so you know, we do have just a few minutes to do Q and A with Natalie. Um, if you guys do want to hop over to webinar jam and type in your questions, that's awesome. Natalie, I do have a question for you from Allison. Love it. Allison says, do you have any advice on how to approach a current ideal client about being a brand ambassador in a way that doesn't feel icky? Yes, I do. So the first thing I would say is if it feels icky, then you likely haven't built up a relationship enough for them to truly be an authentic brand ambassador. Um, and, and why I say that. So I know that came very like direct, but that's the truth. Um, a brand ambassador should be someone that it's so easy to ask them to advocate for your brand because they either A, know and, and love your service or product to a point where they might already be doing that behavior behind the scenes. Um, meaning that you don't want to try to take someone that just bought your, your product and be great. So here's my affiliate program. Here's how to do it. Because what you'll find is until you've built that personal relationship with them, until they feel truly invested, um, you know, they're not ready. So what I would say is before, if you're, if you're worrying about it feeling icky, um, take a step back and actually you know, invest more in them. Um, basically, you know, set, basically like whatever that means for your business. I'm trying to think of great examples, but honestly, it's going to vary across the board. So invest more in them um, before you have that ask of them. And if you do feel like you're ready and you're still going, oh, I don't know, I feel icky. Um, you know, what I would say is always come back to uh, the incentives and the benefits. Why is this great for them? Um, what are they getting out of it? Uh, and, and ultimately, you'll find that people are are driven by a couple very simple uh, things. It's, if you literally can search um, things like reciprocity, there's like principles that, that really um, inspire behavior in someone. And so I would just say, like, what are you giving them? Um, and how is that motivating them in a positive way? How are you really intentionally offering value? And if so, um, and you've done that well, then it doesn't feel like it, it's, it's a give and take um, that is really kind of comfortable. And then once you find a, think of how you find a company you love, like LaCroix. I'm like, I want to be sponsored by LaCroix. I'm obsessed with it. Why? Because I'm taking a little bit of credit in that, by the way. I did I, tell you, you to go should. to LaCroix. Okay. Okay. You should, because I gave up Diet Coke and a bunch of my friends were who were brand ambassadors, maybe without even knowing it for LaCroix, because LaCroix right. has been a positive product in their life, shared about it. And now it's done a lot for me. It would never, if they reach out to me, it would be less than icky. I say, please, if you know someone at LaCroix, like send them my way. We're going to um, get you on billboards for sure. LaCroix. Yeah, Natalie Frank, it's gonna be awesome. So that's where we wanna get your customers to a point where they're so passionate um, that basically by asking them to be a brand ambassador, you're just amplifying and mobilizing a behavior they were already doing, right? Not forcing them to do a behavior they don't want to. That's the key. Absolutely. 
Perfect. Right. And Kayla wants to know, if I am a wedding and boudoir photographer, should I have two different accounts, one for each? Okay, so here's the, here's the tough part, um, Kayla. I would ask specifically for wedding clients, um, you know, there's, there's a twofold process here. Uh, one would be, are they comfortable seeing boudoir images on the same feed as wedding photographs? The reason I ask that is because I actually have customers, like I've had clients that love that. They're like, that doesn't offend them, but I've also had um, brides and grooms that they don't want to see that at all. Um, and so it can actually uh, push someone from the platform. So what I would say is, you know, it's a, it's a personal process. It's a personal decision um, for your brand and your business. My gut reaction would say though, show what you want to be shooting. So uh, on the two um, platforms, I would separate them if it was me. I would have a wedding specific um, account, a boudoir specific account. I would even brand them differently. Like that's, I would run them because I believe in, in niche. So like niching down, like really like getting to that customer that's not just, I'm a wedding photographer. It's I'm a fine art film wedding photographer for, uh, you know, couples in their thirties and forties who have finally found the one um, and are <laughs> ready to spend. Like that's literally how right. specific I would be. Mm -hmm. And that customer is very different than from the type of customer that I would be targeting with boudoir. Maybe boudoir is a woman, not a couple, or maybe it's not a woman, right? Like, but maybe it's a woman um, who wants to feel empowered in her own skin. Like you start to go a different direction. So even the messaging is gonna be different. The way I email that client, potential client is gonna be different. Sure. Um, awesome. Great, well, that's all great advice, Natalie. Thank you so much again. Guys, we're gonna start wrapping things up here. Natalie, how can people find and follow you? Awesome. Okay. So you can follow and find a couple of different ways. Um, one, just Natalie Frank on Instagram, Facebook page, things like that. I would love um, to have you guys over there and please send questions um, if you can just to Natalie at NatalieFrank.com. Happy to answer any of them. I know we didn't get to everybody's, but happy to answer them um, for you guys uh, at any point. Um, and then also follow the Rising Tide Society. Like feel free to uh, go Rising Tide Society um, on Instagram, Rising Tide SOC on Twitter. Uh, there's some amazing content from incredible educators. And I always say, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. And at the Rising Tide Society, that is literally what we're doing. So the smartest creative minds in email marketing, SEO, web design, all of the above, you can find through the Rising Tide community. And um, we're really excited about some of our big projects on the horizon. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie, for being here. It's so special having you on the first episode of Elevate. Um, we absolutely love you. You're such a special person. You know so much about social media and your big help. So thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see everybody later.